The CZ SP-01 Tactical is a pistol that I've had in my collection for over three years and I can count literally on three fingers how many times I've shot this. And let me tell you, I am literally kicking myself that I have not gotten this out to the range or even some shooting competitions since I purchased it way back in 2018. We're gonna talk about this and the reasons why I think this is probably one of the better pistols I have in my collection coming up. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark, welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. As I mentioned, we are going to be talking about the CZ SP-01 Tactical, what it is, where it comes from, the reasons why I haven't really shot it, and kind of get a good overview as to where this pistol kind of fits in to the grand scheme of things when it comes to what I'm looking for in a pistol. Before we get into that, I want to take a second to mention the Fit and Fire newsletter. If you guys haven't signed up for this, I'd encourage you guys to consider doing so. It's a great resource for not only weekly deals, but also training across the country from a variety of different instructors. Uh, I usually try to post uh, sales on ammunition. So if you're looking for cheap ammunition, hopefully I can uh, get that information out to you guys. And then I'm also doing a giveaway each and every single month. So if you guys are interested, swing on by fitandfire.com, sign up for the newsletter, and see if it's something you guys are interested in. Okay, so getting back to the pistol of this video is the CZ SP-01. And this pistol, let me tell you, has really taken me off guard. I've had this since late in 2018 i picked it up at a gun show and i really had been apprehensive to doing any type of shooting with it at all because of a very specific feature to this and we'll talk about that here in just a second but if you guys are not familiar with this pistol this is going to be the evolution of the po1 if you're not familiar with the po1 that is the nato authorized pistol that cz came up with and it is uh, somewhat renowned, I, I would say, in, in, a, in a kind of a weird way. One of the biggest features for a pistol to be authorized for use in NATO is that it has to function at least 950 times before it has any type of malfunctions. If it doesn't meet that standard, then it cannot be considered for use within NATO. CZ claims that the PL-1 has gone 15,000 rounds without a malfunction, and that is why a lot of people believe that it is one of the pistols to kind of compete against uh, in the hammer fire world. With that being said, uh, the PL-1 is actually an evolution in and of itself of the CZ-75. And CZ also claims that the 75 is the most replicated pistol on the market today. I don't have any empirical data to prove or disprove that claim, but I have seen a lot of examples of it being cloned. So, I mean, there is at least some relevance to that claim. As I mentioned, the SP-01 is the evolution of the PL-1 in the fact that this is going to be the full-size version of its predecessor. It's going to have a 4.6 inch barrel, obviously longer slide, really nice Picatinny section here on the dust cover, and it's going to have uh, illuminated combat style three dot sights. Uh, this pistol has been incredibly interesting to shoot. We'll talk about that. Some of the other features that it has is the fact that it is a DASA or double action, single action style pistol. So this is going to pull the really nice, really crisp 
trigger from the CZ-75, put it right into this pistol. One of the areas that this differs from the P01 is the fact that this is not going to have a manual thumb safety, rather it's going to have a decocker. So if the hammer is cocked back and you depress this lever right here, it is going to place the hammer in a half cock position so that it will uh, be in a relatively safe condition and the fact that uh, there will be no hammer slap against the firing pin and with that really heavy long double action trigger uh, it's going to take a lot to allow this to have some type of negligent discharge without the intentional pull of that trigger. Another great aspect of this is it's going to have a really nice uh, accentuated magazine release here and it's going to come with two 18 round magazines. One of the other features that I really like about this is even though this is a double stack 9mm pistol, the fact that this is a very thin framed pistol with really nice contoured rubberized grips makes this pistol fit in my hand so easily. One of my biggest complaints of the Beretta 92FS is that the size of the grip on that just seemed like it was too big for my hand. I get it, here comes all the jokes. I do have small hands for a guy, I'm only 5'7", I'm not a big guy to begin with. So having a pistol that is still a metal framed, double stack 9mm and can fit in my hand like this, man, I tell you, it, it really, really impressed me. Now let's talk about one of the reasons why I haven't shot this very much over the last few years. And that has to do with the fact that this is a DASA style pistol. In my experience with the Beretta 92FS and other pistols very similar to it and this pistol here, I have always noticed that when I pull up the chute and I'm trying to defeat that double action trigger, I'm always pulling to the right on the target because I'm using so much of my trigger finger to really wrench down on that trigger to defeat it. Naturally, after you fire, it's going to be in a single action mode. So you're going to have a little bit of a take up here and then a really crisp break on that single action trigger. And it's been really, really nice. But because of that type of trigger setup, I've been very mm, timid about using this style of pistol. Coming up here in August, I am going to be competing in the tactical games, and I had been looking for a pistol that I could use during the games that would uh, really maximize my ability to shoot, usually something with a really short, crisp, uh, trigger with a short reset is something that I was looking for and I thought the Gerson MC1911C was going to be the pistol for me. Unfortunately, my experience with the pistol that I have, it's had reliability issues and I can't trust it to get through a magazine without some type of issue. That is not something I have to concern myself with when it comes to this particular pistol. Now, I've only had a couple hundred rounds put through this so far, but I've had zero reliability issues. And I know that a couple hundred rounds is really not even getting it out of its break-in period or its wear-in period. But I will say that uh, so far, every round that it has fed, fired, extracted, and injected has gone just as expected. So that is an really, really great attribute. One of the other interesting things about the design of this pistol is the fact that the slide is actually sitting inside the frame. Most pistols that you're going to find, such as a 1911 or a, uh, a Beretta or any other pistol out on the market, um, just about any other pistol is going to have a slide outside of the frame, whereas this is actually hooked into the frame. And that makes for a really great recoiling pistol that allows you to mitigate that recoil really, really easily. Now, one of the things that it also does is it allows, to, it, allows it to have a very low bore axis as well. So that is something that translates into energy into the arm instead of into the wrist, causing a lot of muzzle flip. It also has rails 
all the way down the frame and the slide. So that's going to really help with the slide coasting along the frame as well. Now, one of the biggest downsides to that, as you can see, is it is going to have a very shallow slide and that could cause issues if you're trying to work through some type of malfunction, whether it be ammo or firearm related, because these are machines and these will eventually break or have issues. So if you are trying to manipulate this slide, it's going to not have a lot of purchase area on here for you to grip onto, even though it does have front and rear slide serrations. So there is that biggest downside to it. Outside of that, I have ran this uh, most recently in a two gun match just this past weekend and found that it performed extremely well. I was very, very surprised at how great this pistol shot. More so because it made me more accurate, if there's even a way to do that. What I did find is every single time I pointed this pistol, uh, my sights were aligned, I had good sight picture, and the round was going exactly where I wanted it to go. One of the stages that I had, unfortunately I don't have video of it, but I did have a stage where I had uh, very small A-zone targets for me to hit, and even though I was relatively close, anywhere between three to five yards, every time I pulled the trigger, that round went exactly where I wanted it. And that was something that really, really impressed me. Outside of that, all the other stages that I shot from uh, distances of five to 15 yards, I had acceptable accuracy for my ability to shoot. So this pistol has really impressed me and it has me kicking myself for not having this out of the safe as often as I have. So naturally, this is going to fill the role for my quote unquote competition pistol. Uh, and that's kind of where I see this, this particular pistol uh, and where it excels. Could you use this for home defense? Absolutely. This would be a great nightstand uh, pistol. Could you use it for um, a duty use for like a duty pistol? Absolutely. This would be a great duty pistol. Concealed carry would be a bit of a challenge. It is fairly large. It is a full-size pistol. Uh, since it is an all-metal frame and obviously slide, uh, it's going to be a little heavy to carry. Could you do it? Absolutely. Yeah, you could. Uh, if you were to open carry this, say if you are to walk around your homestead, your ranch, or whatever, this would be another great pistol to do that. However, uh, trying to conceal carry this on a regular basis, especially in the hotter months where you don't have a lot of clothes to kind of conceal your firearms, this would be a bit of a challenge. But like I said, you could still do it. I've been extremely impressed with everything going on with it, the ergonomics, its ability to shoot, its reliability, and uh, again, this is going to be the pistol that I use in all of my two-gun shoots, my IDPA matches, uh, the tactical games, so on and so forth. So really impressed by this. And again, kicking myself that I haven't had it out more often. We're gonna do a lot more with this pistol and we're gonna see this pistol again and again as I post more of this in competitions, not only at my two guns, but also th the tactical games as well and uh, just want to hear your guys' thoughts, sound off in the comment section down below. Where has your experience been with CZ? Has it all been positive? Has you had any issues with them? Uh, I would love to hear your experience with this pistol, seeing that I've done two videos of CZs in one week. <laughs> so, but with that being said, I really do appreciate you guys' support. Everything you're doing for the channel, regardless if it's views, sharing, thumbs ups and comments, all of that is greatly appreciated and uh, it means a lot every single time we get a chance to interact. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Again, check out the Fit and Fire newsletter if you guys are interested in that. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.